this is going to be a review of what we've covered so far about Java. So during this exercise, we're going to do a construction estimate problem. So before we begin, make sure that you have Java and the Java JDK downloaded on your computer. Um, you can run java-version in your terminal to check, and also make sure that you have the IntelliJ, the IntelliJ IDE downloaded on your computer. It's the same one that we've been using for all the tutorials so far. And it's suggested that you watch the previous Java tutorials, especially for this video, since what we're going over here is directly related to those previous tutorials. So what we've covered so far, we've covered the Java program syntax, printing in Java, types, variables, and expressions, binary and hexadecimal numbers, static methods, and then parameters, return values, and math methods. And we're going to use all of these things, except for maybe binary and hexadecimal numbers in this review. So the review exercise, the goal is to write a Java program that calculates the construction cost of a house. The price of this house will be calculated and printed based on the following rules. The house will take up half the plot of land. The cost of the house plans should consist of the roof and the floor costs. The roof will, co will cover the whole area of the house and be $3.5 per square foot. And the floor will cover 90% of the area of the house and cost $7.5 per square foot. And an itemized list of estimates should be printed along with a final estimate. And the size of the plot of land will be hard-coded in for this, for this exercise. So we won't be taking user input since we don't know how to do that yet. We'll just be putting these numbers directly into the method calls that we'll be using. And the structure for this will be, um, as we walk through the program, um, this, so the structure will be, at, I'll we'll walk through the program one at a time, and for every method that you're supposed to write, it'll, it'll say a time limit at the top, and that's going to be only applicable for when this is, to, is presented live for the Lunch and Learns. So you don't have to follow those time limits, you can pause the video and try to program it yourself and then keep going. Um, you can just watch this whole thing straight, however you want to do it. Um, you could even pause the video right now and try to write the whole program yourself just based on this goal slide, however you feel like doing it. So the program walkthrough. For the starting point, you should create a Java class called Construction Estimate and add the main method the class. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in my IntelliJ. So I'm going to do new Java class. I'm going to call it construction estimate. And I'm just putting that straight into this um, straight into the source since it's a review kind of of everything. And I'm going to double click to make the pane on the left go away. And I want to add the main class. So public static void main string art. Okay. And the next thing says to write a method to calculate an area. And the points for this are that it should be based on a length and a width. The length and the width can be non-whole numbers. The area is the length times width, and the length should be a non-whole number. So this first line saying it should be based on a length and a width indicates that those should probably be parameters. And it's telling me that they can be non-whole numbers means that those parameters should be doubles. And then I can tell sort of from this setup that whenever it says to calculate something, that means it should be a return, a method with a return value, and that return value should be a double, since the area can also be a non-whole number. So my header for this method is public static double calculate area, and it's going to take in double length 
and double width. And then I know that area is just length times width, so I'm just going to return length times width. And that's it. I have this here because it's never being used, but we'll fix that later as we continue to build up this calculate uh, this construction estimate class. So that's the area method. Write a method to calculate the to estimate the cost of the roof. And like I said, each of these has the time limit, and that's just for when this is presented in person. You can pause this video and try yourself as you go and give yourself as much time as you need. So again, it says this should be based on the length and the width of the roof. So again, those should be parameters. And the length and the width can be non-whole numbers, so those parameters should be double. Since it's doing an estimate of the cost, it needs a return value. And that return value can be a non-whole number, so again, the return will be a double. And the cost of the roof is the area of the roof times the cost per square foot. And we know that the cost per square foot is $3.50. So I'm going to do public static double estimate roof cost. And it's going to take in double length and double width. And I need to return the area of the roof times the cost. So I already have a method to calculate the area. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. So I'm going to say that the double area is equal to calculate area length width. And then I'm going to return area times and that's it. That calculates the cost of my roof. And now calculate area doesn't have, isn't gray anymore because I'm actually using it. So then the next one is to estimate the cost of the floor. So this will be based on the length and the width of land that the house sits on. So again, those are non-whole numbers, so there should be double parameters. And then the cost of the roof is the area of the floor times the cost per square foot. And the area of the floor is 90% of the area of the land that the house sits on. And the cost per square foot is $7.05. And again, the cost of the floor is a non-whole number, so I'm going to be returning a double for this method. So the method header would be public static double estimate floor cost. So it's going to be double length, double width. I'm going to say double area of floor is calculate area length width times 0.9. Since the area of the floor is 90% of the area of the whole house, and then I'm going to return area of the floor times the cost per square foot, which is 7.5. So that's calculating the floor cost. And now I want to write a method to estimate the cost of building the entire house. So this, again, will be based on the length and the width of the plot of land. But here, it's saying that they should be whole numbers. So I should take in integers as my parameters. And then I know that the house should take up half the plot of land. And the roof should cover the whole house. The front and backyard should be equal in size. 
and the cost of the house is the roof plus the floor. And it want I want you to put an itemized receipt of the estimates and the final estimate for all of the construction. So I'm going to do public static void. Print estimate of house and length and width. So here I'm going to put the estimate of house in the method because I know that I want to print an itemized receipt and I need all of the intermediate values for that. Okay, so here I want to get the length and the width of the house. So I'm going to do double length of house. is equal to length. Because I know that I want the house to take up half of the plot of land. And I've decided to make it take up the full length, but only half the width. And I want double width of house to be double width divided by two. And I had to cast to the double here in order to make it be do double division as opposed to inch to division. So you could have made uh, divided the length by two and kept the width the same for the house. It doesn't really matter which one you do as long as the house is taking up half the plot of land. Okay, so now I want to get the cost of the roof. So I'm going to do double cost of roof is estimate roof cost, length of house, width of house. Since I know the roof takes up the entire, the entirety of the house, I have double cost of cost of floor equals estimate roof cost, and that's going to be also based on length of the house and width of the house. And I know that the cost of the house is the cost of the roof plus the cost of the floor. Okay, so now I want to do the itemized receipt of the estimates and then the final estimate of construction. So I'm going to do system.out. Oops. This should be cost of floor. System that out dot printlin for roof estimate plus cost of roof. System that out dot printlin floor estimate plus cost of floor and then system dot out dot printlin total house estimate cost of house. Okay. And that should finish up this method. Um, some things to notice, uh, I again fat fingered it, that should be, oops, oh, um, some things to notice, 
the parameter names here don't have to match the parameter names here. See, this is length of house, while well, this is just length. You can return a calculation. You don't have to return just a variable that holds the full calculation. We created this calculate area method because we're going to have to calculate the area in two different places, and we wanted to make sure that it was calculated consistently both places. And that's it. So we'll, you'll also notice that this is still gray because we haven't used it yet. So the final thing we want to do is call the method from our main method. So I want to call it once with one set of with one set of length and width. So I'm going to do print es es <clears throat> estimate of house, and I'm going to say 100 for the length and 75 for the width. And then I want to print it again with another set. So I'm just going to copy, paste, and here I'm going to make this 200 and this 125. And then it wants me to put a new line between the two calls. So I'm going to do just system dot out dot print line. And that'll put just a new line. So now all of my methods that I've written are being used. And I'm printing out the estimates. So I'm going to do run and then run. I'm going to do construction estimate. And this is the output. I have the roof estimate, the floor estimate, and then the total estimate. And if you do the math, this is equal to this plus this. And then I have another set, roof estimate, floor estimate, and then the, house, the total house estimate. And just like the receipt example that we've done in previous tutorials, this doesn't have properly formatted things, right? So the dollar amounts don't have two decimal places. And in fact, what I probably want to do to make it look a little bit more like the receipt is add in dollar signs. So rerun this. And now I have dollar signs, which is much better. But again, it still doesn't have the two decimal places. And we'll learn in a later tutorial how to do the two decimal places and make it look a little bit more like money. And also, in a later tutorial, learn how to do things like make um, this part of the receipt line up properly, so that way it doesn't look a little bit funky like this, with it being jagged. So we've run the program. Yay! And here is some practice for later with this program. It's an expansion, and so expand the program at the construction estimate to include the cost of the backyard fence, the fence should cover three sides of the area of the backyard, and the backyard is the same size as the front yard, and the fence cost $12.50 per, per foot. And then you want the cost of the bathrooms. There is one bathroom per house, plus one extra bathroom per thousand square feet and each bathroom cost eight hundred dollars and then you want to include the cost of the front yard fence and the fence will cover three sides of the front yard plus a gate and the fence cost six point six dollars and twenty five cents a foot since it's a half tall picket fence plus fifty dollars for a nice gate so you'll add all that together, and some important things to notice is that the backyard and the front yard are the same size. So that means that the backyard and the front yard are essentially a um, quarter of the land plot. So keep that in mind as you're doing calculations. And that's it. I hope that was helpful. Um, you can 
try redoing this again by yourself with slightly different um, rules for the plot of land if you want to, or uh, delete what you have and try it again, whatever you think will help you with it. Um, the final solution is included in the description for this video, just like with all the other tutorials in this playlist. I hope that was helpful.